Welcome back to Life's Chillant. My name is Avital, and this week's Parsha is Parsha by Yeshev. Before I begin, I want to mention that what I'm going to talk about today is pretty closely inspired by this wonderful book that I read a couple, last year, actually, by Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory. Um, it's his book on Judaism's life-changing ideas, and it was the chapter that I read on Parsha Vayeshev when I did read through this book last year was so impactful and so such a powerful message that I knew that when I would get back to doing my weekly Parsha videos that this was a topic I wanted to talk about. And so with that being said, Parsha Vayeshev, the central character in Parsha Vayeshev is Joseph. Joseph is the son of Jacob and Rachel. And Joseph, the Torah tells us that he was the favorite child of Jacob, that Jacob it was kind of known amongst the brothers and in the family that Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. And between that and the dreams that Joseph had about his brothers bowing down to him, being subservient to him, him being the leader of his older brothers, um, Joseph's brothers felt hatred towards him. That's what the Torah tells us. They felt hatred towards him. They felt, I would say, antagonized by him. They maybe were jealous of him. But whatever they, feelings they harbored towards Joseph, they were not pleasant warm, fuzzy feelings. They definitely didn't have a close relationship. And so the part shrug continues and we see that Joseph's brothers, actually they place him in a pit because at first they think, oh, we're gonna kill Joseph, that'll solve our problems, we'll get rid of him. Then they decide maybe they're not gonna kill him. But eventually what happens is that Joseph is sold to a caravan of Ishmaelites who bring him to the land of Egypt. Now, it's important for me to go through these series of events of Joseph in order to understand our point at the end. So just bear with me as I go through this recap. So Joseph is sold to this Ishmaelite caravan and they take him to the land of Egypt. Now, in Egypt, he is sold to a man named Potiphar. Potiphar was one of the cour couriers of Pharaoh and um, he was a powerful man in Egypt. And whatever Joseph did for him became successful. God sort of blessed it that whatever Joseph would get involved in related to Potiphar would be successful, and therefore Potiphar kind of made him in charge of everything. Now the Torah also tells us that Joseph was a very attractive man, and that Potiphar's wife was very attracted to Joseph and wanted to, and tried repeatedly actually to lure Joseph. She wanted to be with Joseph, and Joseph was... A good man. He he didn't want to be with the wife of the man who has given him kind of everything in Egypt, the man who has put him in charge of everything and taken him from being a lowly servant to being someone. But one day, Potiphar's wife, nobody's in the house, and she approaches Joseph again, trying to lure him to be with her, and she grabs hold of his garment. And so when he's fleeing, she ends up with his garment. And what she does is she orchestrates this story. She tells her guards that Joseph had, had tried to assault her, had sort of put his advances on her, and that when she screamed, he left. And so um, Joseph is kind of framed for this assault, and as a result, he's put in prison. So, so far things are not going so well. He's hated by his brothers. He is sold as a slave, taken to Egypt, he, once in Egypt, he thinks he's going to have a break and then no, he is accused of assault and put in prison. And in prison, it doesn't get any better for him because things seem kind of hopeless. He thinks he has this potential way out because he can interpret dreams. And so there are two people in prison with him, the cup bearer, bearer of Pharaoh and the baker of Pharaoh. And he correctly interprets, Joseph correctly interprets their dreams. And when the cup bearer is freed from prison and restored to his position, Joseph asks him, Joseph asks the cup bearer, please remember me and, you know, share good things about me to Pharaoh because he wants to be released from prison. But as the Torah tells us, yet the chamberlain of the cup bearers did not remember Joseph, but he forgot him. So finally, he has this potential for a way out of this terrible situation he's been in, and the guy doesn't even remember him. And so that's where the Parsha ends. That's the last line of the Parsha is telling us that the cup bearer did not remember Joseph. Joseph is left in this prison. 
If the story of Joseph ended there, if the Torah did not continue to tell us anything about Joseph, we would think, wow, what a tragic life Joseph lived. And I'm going to read re directly from Rabbi Sachs's book because I think he, he says it so well about why we, why we have to know what comes next, why we can't just stop this story at the end of this Parsha. Because here's what Rabbi Sachs says. He says, don't think you understand the story of your life at halftime. That's the lesson of Joseph. At the age of 29, he would have been justified in thinking of his life as an abject failure, hated by his brothers, criticized by his father, sold as a slave, imprisoned on a false charge, and with one, his one chance of freedom gone. Again, everything just seemed so hopeless for Joseph. There didn't seem like there was any possibility that he could turn things around and have a good life. It seemed like he was just doomed to have this one series of tragic events after the next. But as we see in next week's Parsha, what happens to Joseph is quite remarkable. Eventually, Pharaoh does need somebody to interpret his dream. And when Joseph does so correctly, Joseph is taken out of prison and he becomes immensely successful, so much so that he becomes viceroy, viceroy over Egypt, the second in command to Pharaoh. Joseph rises through the ranks and he's so successful. Now he kind of rules over Egypt, this place where he once came as a, as a servant, as a slave. And not only that, but when there is a great famine in the land and his family from home is starving, they come to Egypt and because he is viceroy over Egypt, he has the power to feed them and to save them through this famine. He saves not only his family, but all of Egypt. So Joseph, his life turns around, it changes. Something that was so unexpected to happen to someone in prison to become a ruler over Egypt, it did happen. And his life turned around and it changed from something that seemed hopeless to something that is thriving and successful. So not only was his life successful, but Joseph also was able to save his family as a result of these hardships that he went through. If he hadn't had such a powerful position in Egypt, who knows what would have happened to his family during this great famine, if they would have died out, if they would have starved. So his suffering was temporary and it was also for a purpose that was greater than himself. And we have to take this powerful lesson about Joseph and think about it in our own lives. What Rabbi Sachs said, at 29 years of age, you would have looked at Joseph's life, it would have seemed like a failure. But give it a couple of years and he is ruler in Egypt. It's the same in our own lives. Whether we're going through a struggle and we don't understand the purpose of it and it seems like it's lasting forever and it's never going to end and it's hopeless, there is always hope and there's always a possibility to change. Something completely unexpected and is crazy as becoming ruler over Egypt when you were just a servant. There's always the potential and power for change and for miracles. And we have to keep that in mind, that all of our suffering, all of our difficulties are temporary. They won't endure forever. Things will change. And that the cause of our suffering is not for nothing. That even if we can't understand it, do you think when Joseph was sitting there in the prison cell, he could understand why he had endured all this suffering? I would argue that he couldn't. And it's a similar in our, in our situations in our lives. When we're dealing with something difficult, we, can under, we cannot understand why we're in this situation. But if you have faith that God has his master plan and that it's going to lead to an ultimate good, that could be something that gives us a reassurance and is comforting. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and a Shabbat Shalom, and I look forward to speaking with you next time.